congratulations, you've got your barber license. Now what you need is a shop of your own. And you're considering the idea of cutting hair in a barbershop kiosk. And that makes perfect sense. Why? Well, because you know you can put a barbershop kiosk where the people are. Where there's lots of people, you're going to get lots of attention. Where there's lots of attention, you're going to do lots and lots of haircuts. And of course, lots of haircuts bring you the most important thing, right? Lots of money. So let's say you get this barbershop kiosk. Where exactly would you put it? Where can you put a barbershop kiosk? What's a good location? What's a bad location? Those are all great questions. In the next few minutes together, I'm going to tell you what five things I look for each and every time I'm out looking for a new location for a new barbershop kiosk. Sound like a plan? Let's do it. Hi, I'm Barbara Joe Sexton, and since 2013, I have been in the business of helping barbers escape that low, low, low paying chair rental trap and getting them into barbershop franchises of their own. What I'd like for you to do right now is to click that red subscribe button below. Don't forget to click the bell. That'll make sure that you're notified each and every time I upload a brand new video. So where is the best place to put a barbershop kiosk? I look for five things every time I go out looking for a new location. The first thing I look for is lots and lots of foot traffic. Now that may seem obvious. That may seem like one of those things you shouldn't have to mention. But I mention it because so many barbers are in such off the beaten path locations that practically no foot traffic. So let's just take a second or two and talk about why foot traffic is important, okay? Here's why it's important if it's never been explained to you before. A barbershop is a business. To survive, businesses need to be prospecting for new customers all the time. So what does that mean, prospecting? Well, you need to expose yourself to lots and lots of people in a given day, a week, or a month so that some of those people will decide to try you. So you're in this busy location, people are walking by you all the time. That's why you need the foot traffic. The foot traffic brings prospects are watching you work, watching you do great haircuts. Every time one of those passers-by decides, I'm going to give this barber a try, that prospect becomes a trial. Trials become customers and customers turn into money. So that's the whole prospect trial customer thing. So doesn't it make sense that the more prospecting you do, the more money you're going to make in the end? The more prospects you've got, the more trials you get, the more trials, the more customers, and the more customers, the more money. That's why foot traffic is important. The second thing I look for in a good barbershop kiosk location is private local ownership of the host company. So what does that mean? That means when I'm looking for a company to put my barbershop into, I need to make sure that the owner of that company is someone that I can reach. If you go make a sales call on a company like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or a Walmart, you're never, never, never going to get to the decision maker. In order for you to run your business inside the walls of another business, you have to get the owner's permission. It's been my experience that if the host company is owned by a local person or a local group, I can, first of all, I can get to them much easier and I find that getting permission is much faster. So that's why private local ownership of the host company is the second most important thing I look for. So now we're down to number three. The third most important thing I look for is a favorable lease agreement or a favorable rent agreement. So what does that mean exactly? Well, let's just say this. A busy one-chair barbershop is going to generate somewhere between 2,000 and 4,000 people 
through the front door of that host company every year. Now, that has value. You don't want to ignore that when you're negotiating your rent. So it's been my experience that your rent agreement should be no more than 10 to 12 percent of the total number of haircut dollars you expect to generate in a month. So let's run the numbers on that. Let's say you expect to generate $5,000 a month in this location. 0.12 times $5,000 equals 600. What is 600? $600 would be the maximum number of dollars I think you should spend on rent for that location. If I can't negotiate and if you can't negotiate a rate that's $600 or less for a space that you think is going to generate $5,000, keep looking. Before we explore the fourth thing that I look for in a location, I have a question to ask you and this is it. Do you keep track of the number of haircuts you do every day? If you do, tell me how you keep track of the number of haircuts you do every day. If you would, please put that in the comment section below. Thank you so much. So what's the fourth thing I look for in a new barbershop kiosk location? Close proximity to the restroom. I, I know that that sounds a little crazy, but here's why. The barber boards in most states insist that barbers offer their clients reasonable access to bathroom facilities before or after haircuts. What is reasonable proximity or what is it close proximity? Unfort unfortunately, the barber boards don't ever specify that. So what I would tell you is play it safe. Be as close to the bathrooms as you can without compromising your visibility within the host location store. Does that make sense? Great. That's point number four. Close proximity to the restrooms. And the fifth thing I look for in a good location is convenient access to water. So why water? Well, the barbershop kiosk has got some water tanks. It's got fresh water tanks. It's got a gray water tank. And every so often, you need to replenish the fresh water. You need to dump the gray water. Uh, that happens for most barbers somewhere between every two and every four weeks. It's not something that you deal with on a daily. It's not even something that you deal with on a weekly basis. But when you do deal with it, it is nice to have convenient access to fresh water. Okay, that's it. Those are the five critical things I look for when I'm looking for a new location for a new barber stop kiosk. Not all locations are good locations. You know, there are literally thousands of different kinds of businesses in this country. But there are only 20 kinds of businesses that I would suggest you consider putting your barbershop into. Now, I put that list of 20 different kinds of businesses in the description section. I want you to download it right now. It's absolutely free. It's called the Top 20 Spots. This list is great insurance against you picking a bad location for your barbershop kiosk. Make the business of barbering as important to you as the art of barbering, and you will soon have a barbershop franchise of your own.